Hello community. Welcome to follow third Selfish OS community program webinar. My name is Raine Mäkeläinen and I'm a software developer at Yolla and I'm hosting this webinar. This webinar is about Selfish OS application SDK and I'm here to help you get getting started with that. We have James Nori as user Jolla uh, moderating and moderating discussion on YouTube. Then we have Vesamatti Hartikainen here with me at studio. Jarkko Lehtoranta from SDK team uh, on Mer Meeting channel. Both Vesku and Jarkko are monitoring questions on the Mer Meeting channel on Freenode. Uh, let's have a QA session at the end uh, if, if there is no chance to answer during the webinar. I have organized the webinar so that uh, I first show a little bit of the Selfish OS org developer web pages and then show from where to get the uh, download the application SDK. Then I go through Selfish OS application SDK user interface. And finally, I show how to build, deploy, debug, and profile application. Uh, without further ado, if we are ready to go, let's get started. So you can find the uh, Selfish developer documentation from selfishos.org slash wiki slash selfishos. On the left hand side, uh, there, are, there is the menu, different articles, uh, development of developing, uh, references, tools, about hardware, development services that uh, we are having, but as we are now focusing on the application development, let's go to the application development section. From this page, uh, you can find information that we can get started. So you can download the application SDK from, from here, find the tutorials, different guidelines, API documentations, and then finally way how to submit the applications to Harbor. So you can get the SDK over here. But let's do not waste now time to install the SDK, rather jump to the SDK and see how it looks like. So here we have the Selfish application SDK. It does look like a cute SDK. Doesn't it? Uh, there are plenty of familiar things. So basically, whole UI is more or less the same. Uh, biggest difference is that uh, we are we are having a, a build engine that is uh, is a virtual machine containing tool change and tools. In addition, the virtual, virtual machine includes Selfish OS targets for building and running applications. Uh, by doing this, we can then dip, uh, deliver the SDK for various targets or platforms like Windows, Mac and Linux. So from the bottom, 
left corner. We can start the SDK and stop the emulator. Start and stop SDK and emulator. I have them both running already. Uh, emulator here on the right hand side. Emu emulator works just like a uh, like a device, like a physical device. For instance, I can there are all the enablers available. I can go to, for instance, to settings. When I'm starting it, I can set the passwords for for developing. Or if I want to use, for instance, quick app closing gesture, I can enable enable it. It's handy when you are developing your app and you are having them running. You can close them easily. Okay, and yeah. as this is the uh, emulator, there must be a way to configure them. So we can go to tools, options, and there we have devices. Uh, by default, we have only selfish emulator there, which is the one that I'm having here at the right hand side. And, and uh, I have in my setup here uh, Yolla C device connected to my laptop as well. So I'll add it there. So what we do is that we add a, add a physical device. The IP number is the same uh, is the normal one. And we give the password over here. Test the connection. Once device is detected, we just continue. Okay, device is deployed, tested, and now we should have a connection to the device. Okay, then one addition is that uh, you can configure the under the MER section. Uh, you can continue, co configure the virtual machine, uh, shared folders, and the SSH keys connections. Uh, then one thing on the left hand side, which is different from the standard good SDK is the selfish OS mode. From there, you can uh, manage the targets that you are you have there for specific hardware running the self servers there are now now i have arm target and i486 targets and uh, behind this uh, setting con setting button we can for instance install packages to the build engine and uh, to the target that we are looking. No, in normal case, cases you don't need to install packages. They are fetched uh, when you are building the application. But you may end up in cases that you need to install them manually. Then you can update the SDK from under the updates check for the updates. Uh, under Harbor tools, there is one important tool, which is this RPM validator. And you should use this uh, when you are about to send your application to Harbor uh, for acceptance. It basically validates that uh, the application is good to go and have all the guidelines in place. So in my setup here, I have two Harper or two applications already imported. Uh, to create uh, the application SDK. First one is 
just like uh, application created with the wizard. Let's deploy that first, first to the uh, emulator. So we want to deploy it to first my first app to emulator as an R RPM package. So what we can do is that uh, we basic we can run build and deploy step separately or execute the run step directly and it builds and deploys the application to the emulator. Okay, now we have our first application inside the emulator. Uh, there is one thing that I configured beforehand. Uh, as you see, it's printing out the up binary name and there are some arguments coming. So what I did or what you can do is that under this project section, you can uh, further configure the build, both build and run environments. And I added here for the uh, IFO emulator target SDK webinar argument. And then uh, now it is printing it on the QML side. Okay, this is not this is the normal way of deploying the application. But we don't start actually to too much to develop over here. Rather, I now go and start debugging a bit the application and let's see how it looks like if I start this QML debugger from the SDK. I have now, now if we would like to break some somewhere and see that okay we have a problem we might have a problem over here or we would just be interested that uh, what it what's happening when we execute a piece of JavaScript. So you can add breakpoints uh, to JavaScript code blocks. So let's have a breakpoint here on the second page on, on the click handler. And let's see what happens. I click the item five and we hit the breakpoint. I add it. Added reference also to this uh, label so that we can check also the state of the label. So we you can see and find all this all the properties and values of them from here. Really, it's powerful, easy to use tool when you are having problems in your JavaScript and you would like to find or need to find a way to solve them. So you can add breakpoints to JavaScript code blocks and uh, break there. And then here you have the controls for debugger. So I just press F5 and continue. So this is the debugger. Then as I have the Yolla C device connected and I took this uh, Tweetian, Harbor Tweetian uh, from GitHub. I would like to see that how it looks like in the, in the, hmm? how the application looks like if when we start it. So what we can do is that uh, 
now when we need to do is that uh, we select the tweet and select the target arm and pick now the yolla c device as a target device. So what we do then is that we are interested about the startup. So we have the recording enabled. We start the profiler. And from profiler then you can, once we get the results, we will, we will, it will render a timeline about any, which contains various aspects of the application execution that can then be used to uh, analyze your application. When developing QML, it's, it's important then that we take those, or when we have these easy to, easy to use tools, it's good to also, when developing, a uh, little bit give a look always to what's going on on the application. So let's now zoom out a bit. We see that we are compiling QML here, this first part. Then we are creating something and there's like a one second timestamp over there. Then over here under like a lower, uh, we have signal handlers and there looks to be something bigger, bigger over here. Uh, it seems to be on the main QML component on complete signal handler that we are executing like a 450 milliseconds. Uh, I have by the way re uh, registered my Twitter account already so it, it's like a, just a side note. And now if we jump to the JavaScript side, we can drill down basically the place uh, of be, find the place uh, where the time is consumed. So now it looks that it's this uh, settings loaded. And if we start looking, we see that, okay, this meetup is like a one fac factor there and trends page is another factor. Uh, so this was like a 400 milliseconds and what we can do is that based on the fact that I see on the device it looks that it shows the timeline. I'm not that familiar with this Tweetian application but let's just try what happens now if I comment out these lines. So you can start recording. If you are profiling, you can start and stop the recording whenever you like. It can be shorter uh, timeline that you are interested. You can profile like a panning or flicking, for instance. Okay, again, Twitter is starting, started. I just see from the screen that when it started. So let's again zoom out. Okay, we have JavaScript here. We have the uncompleted uh, signal handler on the main page. Now it's already down to 60, 76 milliseconds. So it must be somewhere here on the JavaScript blocks uh, where, we, where we can see the result or find the spot the place. Okay, here it is, this settings loaded. So now it's down to 32 milliseconds. Okay, this is a bit theoretical thing because I don't know if we can do it, but this gives, as a developer, it gives to me an idea that maybe I could uh, defer loading of these two tabs 
or pages of this tweet and so that I would start loading of them after I see the first view, not at the very beginning. I'm not sure whether it's doable, but just something that caught my eye. So this is the things that I had in mind about the SDK. Do we have VESCO questions online somewhere? Something specific that we could tackle? Is there a way to set up a proxy configuration used by, S, by the SDK v, VM and the emulator VM? Let's find an answer. Yeah, good. No, uh, it, uh, somebody was asking Paul. Three uh, was asking about profiling C++. Uh, this is a QML profiler. So how it visualizes the, then the parts that uh, if you, for instance, have integrated uh, your own C++ there. Uh, I think it just gives these blank. Uh, hmm? Is my blank blank parts to the timeline, but you can guess from those that uh, if you know the execution moment, you can then uh, pinpoint probably that uh, it's happening there, but you can't directly see the uh, C++ parts. Fernando Pascual Semsa is, is asking when I try to register an actual device I want to create or it, I always get an error key deployment failed unknown error hmm. Jare do you have an uh, idea at the channel Mary meeting I don't remember seeing that personally, but it doesn't rule out anything. Device. Uh, for Olavi, uh, debugging real device is possible. Uh, we will have at some point of time uh, a bit deeper dive to the debugging tools and also to the platform SDK uh, components that I'm usually developing requires that I run uh, remote GDP and then connect that connect to that GDP from the uh, from the target on the SDK. I'm not hundred percent sure now that how would I initiate that uh, over here. Uh, let's try just to not 
it like this git arm uh, not like this let's kick the start debugger So basically, you, it, you should be able to attach to uh, running processes. Let's see, I, I'm just starting the tweet here again and see what happens. Not sure whether it shows. These are probably no. no. It's, all, it's only listing the items on the. On the from the targets but in for sure you can do it from command line uh, we will come back to those kind of topics uh, when on upcoming webinars. How is the Mer meeting IRC, uh, Mer meeting IRC channel ongoing? Okay, I think we covered quite a bit. I hope that you found something uh, new and in interesting aspects. Uh, if you face issues, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, 
about these SRPMs, I don't think you can deploy them like a, on the creator. Uh, theoretically, probably you can build, build steps. You can configure rather fr freely, actually. Just an idea that when you are building and deploying, uh, you can modify modify the <coughs> modify the build steps. Uh, oh, do we have like over here like a custom? custom process step so probably you could like do quite a bit of things given that the tools are available but you can configure this this build process from the run section or are you meaning that where are those uh, was was the question about where are those uh, RPMs located? Uh, about these uh, supporting other languages like Go or Rust, there is no such a plan at the moment. But you can uh, go and do kind of develop with those languages, but there is no like a bind QML bindings are not like a, on our plans. Thanks, Jarkko. Okay. Let's continue the discussion on the mailing lists. We, if you have issues or you have topics that you would like to get so, sorted out. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed the webinar. Let's... It, yeah, so I think we are we are done. Thanks a lot about uh, of the questions. Let's try to uh, let's try to summarize those. There probably the good place would be the YouTube live or the channel. I also add the links the links for the of the application SDK there. Uh, as said, I hope that you enjoyed and found something new. Thank you all. See you next time. Bye bye.